It was February the 14th, 2018, Valentine's Day. On that day, a 19-year-old mass shooter armed with an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle and multiple magazines of ammunition entered Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School and murdered 17 people. That shooting sparked a nationwide youth-led movement for new gun safety legislation. But a year later, little had been done at the federal level to curb gun violence. By Valentine's Day 2019, then-President Donald Trump was trying to push the nation's attention back to his favorite pet issue, building a wall to stop immigrants. At the time, Trump was threatening to declare a national emergency in order to try to build his precious border wall without congressional approval. And it was that threat from Trump which prompted this counter threat from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. If the president can declare an emergency on something that he has created as an emergency, an, an, an illusion that he wants to convey, just think of what a president with different values can present to the American people. You want to talk about a national emergency? Let's talk about today, the one-year anniversary of another manifestation of the epidemic of gun violence in America. That's a national emergency. Why don't you declare that emergency, Mr. President? I wish you would. Why don't you declare that emergency, Mr. President? If Trump declares a national emergency at the border, she said, just think of what a president with different values can present to the American people. The very next day, Donald Trump did declare a national emergency at the U.S. southern border. And the very next year, the nation did elect a president with very different values. Tonight, that president issued an address to call for action on gun violence in America. He did not declare a national emergency. But here is some of what he did say. After Columbine, after Sandy Hook, after Charleston, after Orlando, after Las Vegas, after Parkland, nothing has been done. This time, that can't be true. This time, we, we must actually do something. We need to ban assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. And if we can't ban assault weapons, then we should raise the age to purchase them from 18 to 21. Strengthen background checks. Enact safe storage law and red flag laws. Repeal the immunity that protects gun manufacturers from liability. Address the mental health crisis, deepening the trauma of gun violence and as a consequence of that violence. These are rational, common-sense measures. But my God, the fact that the majority of the Senate Republicans don't want any of these proposals even to be debated or come up for a vote I find unconscionable. Let us finally do something. God bless the families who are hurting. God bless you all. Let us finally do something. President Biden tonight calling for a host of new gun safety measures and urging Congress, Republicans in Congress, to make them happen. And the president is right. Only Congress can make those things happen. But there are also things that he himself can do to try and curb gun violence and things the president can threaten to do himself if Congress does not act. President Biden has already used his executive authority to crack down on the proliferation of so-called ghost guns, which are untraceable and can evade metal detectors. But gun safety activists have pointed out that there is still much more the president could do without any Republican votes in Congress, without Joe Manchin's help. He could widen the definition of gun sellers to include private individuals and gun show attendees, ending their exemption from federal background checks. He could create a new office of gun violence pr protection in the White House to coordinate efforts across the country. He could lift the ban on releasing gun tracing data from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, data that could help show where guns are flowing in this country, especially criminal guns. He could boost local enforcement of existing red flag laws. And of course, he could follow Nancy Pelosi's 2019 suggestion and declare gun safety a national emergency with all the new powers and funding that entails. Those are executive orders he could do. All of that, though, rather frustratingly, remains tonight in the president's back pocket. For now, the hopes of changing America's gun laws continues to rest with Democratic lawmakers in Congress trying to strike a deal with Republicans.
the same Republicans who have spent the last two weeks gaslighting the nation about the problem we actually face. A lot of hay has been made of the fact that Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell has reportedly dispatched Texas Republican Senator John Cornyn to work with Democrats on a new proposal to combat school shootings. But listen to the way Mitch McConnell actually talked about those negotiations when asked about them back in his home state of Kentucky earlier this week. We have a, a group led by Senator Cornyn and uh, Senator Murphy on the Democratic side discussing how we might be able to come together to target the problem, which is mental illness and school safety. We are going to come together to target the problem, he says, which is mental illness and school safety. Republicans have gone out of their way to try and not make this about guns, to not even mention the word guns. For the past week, we've watched them time and again redirect this conversation to be about school safety in the abstract, saying we need to harden schools and limit the number of doors each school has. Those arguments were ludicrous to begin with, but they were completely destroyed yesterday when a gunman walked into a medical center in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and killed two physicians, a receptionist and a patient. We now know that that shooter was armed with a 40 caliber semi-automatic Smith & Wesson pistol that he purchased on Sunday, and, of course, an AR-15 semi-automatic assault rifle, which he purchased on the day of the shooting, approximately one hour before he walked into that medical center. Will Republicans now tell us that we need to harden hospitals as well? Is it too easy to walk into a hospital in America? Too many doors? What about a church? or a synagogue, or a Sikh temple, or a grocery store, or a bowling alley, or a movie theater. The problem facing Democrats at this moment is how to engage Republicans on this issue when Republicans refuse to admit what the problem is. How do Democrats make it clear that Republicans' opposition to any limitations on guns in America is not just wrong, but dangerous? Well, here is one example of how it can be done from Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell. 19 kids are dead. 19 children are dead. And so to my Republican colleagues, I ask, who are you here for? Are you here for our kids or are you here for the killers? Because if you were here for the kids, you would do all you could to protect the next school shooting that's about to happen. And we know what's going to happen in America. But if you're here for the killers, you would do everything to make it easier for the next school shooting to happen. So is that the way Democrats should be taking on Republicans in this fight? And it is a fight. Or does the safety of the American public rely on good faith attempts to negotiate with a party that has demonstrated its bad faith on this issue time and time again?